in this video, I'll be going over how to make or really how to build a massive dividend portfolio. But before I get into the video, if you haven't checked out my channel before, I'm talking about investing in the stock market, really anything that has to do with money, so for interest and stuff like that, definitely head over onto my channel and consider subscribing. But other than that, getting onto the video, um, like I said, getting right into it, how to build a dividend portfolio. Now, the first thing you're definitely going to want to take a look at is what type of brokerage you want to set up with. So I currently use Robinhood and M1 Finance, and you know every portfolio, or excuse me, every brokerage account has their pros and cons. Um, so when you're building a dividend portfolio, some things you're probably going to want to look at. Um, really, if you want to look at this with any portfolio, you know, regardless of what you're going for, but. Um, a couple things is fees, how many fees you're being charged, um, whether or not you're getting charged per trade every time you buy and sell, how much these fees are, because this can definitely take a significant impact on your portfolio. But um, if you're building a dividend portfolio, portfolio, you're probably only buying, you're probably not selling, and you'd probably be able to buy a lot of these stocks in a lump sum. So maybe fees aren't the biggest deal to you. Another thing you might want to take into consideration is whether there's a minimum deposit fee or a minimum deposit. You know, some brokerages have you have to have a thousand dollars in your portfolio, or you have to deposit. You know, a minimum of anywhere. Some I've seen as low as five hundred to zero, but others I've seen as high as like five to ten thousand. So that's one thing to take into consideration as well. And then another thing when you're setting up your brokerage, especially if you're trying to build a dividend portfolio, is drip effect. So what drip is? It stands for dividend reinvestment. Um, program and some brokerages have these some don't so that's definitely one thing to look into if you want to build a dividend portfolio what this means is that every single time you get a dividend uh, that amount will be reinvested straight into your portfolio it's usually back into that stock some you can customize it a little bit more than others but most of them it's pretty sim it's pretty general it's pretty you know similar for the most part basically every time you get that dividend it just goes right back into that stock reinvesting it in it and usually for this to happen the brokerage has to have fractional shares which is another thing you might want to look at for your brokerage account but um the one i you know like, like i said i use the robinhood app and i'm on finance but i think m1 finance would probably be better for dividend um, portfolios simply because you can own fractional shares and they do have a sort of um I guess you could call it a drip program. It's a little bit different, but um, they do reinvest your dividends every single time the dividend hits $10. They put it straight back into your whole portfolio. I don't actually believe you can control which stocks it's actually going into, but um, with M1 Finance, that probably doesn't matter as much. But anyways, um, tip number two, how to build a dividend portfolio. Um, one thing is that I talked about this in previous videos, uh, definitely don't rely only on your capital gains or just on those dividends being reinvested back in your portfolio. A big thing about investing is to continually deposit money into your brokerage account. And that's something that I think a lot of people miss out on. And um, that's mainly because they have too high of expectations on how many returns they're going to get. So for example, let's say you're not putting any money into your portfolio, you're only solely relying on your, you know, just realized gains and gains from dividends. So let's say you get, you know, 7% on average, which is what most people get. And then let's say your dividend returns, you know, add up to 3% on average, that's a total of 10% a year. Let's say you start off your portfolio with, I don't know, $10,000, which probably most of you aren't starting off your portfolios with that much money, especially if you're new to investing. But so 10% of $10,000 is $1,000 a year added up to 10 years, you'd get your money back. So that's not a very high rate at all. You're really not making a whole lot of money that way. You know, it'd take 10 years essentially to double your money, um, assuming that you're getting this pretty constant seven to 10% return every single year. So obviously if you are depositing money, you know, whether it be weekly, bi-weekly, monthly, let's say you're, you know, depositing maybe an extra hundred bucks a week, um, then your portfolio would build a lot better than it would just simply relying on those dividend returns or those capital gains. So another way you could definitely increase your dividend portfolio is just simply by depositing and not solely relying on returns. Now, um, I think that's probably the biggest one on this list right here. That's a lot of things people forget about. Um, they watch a lot of YouTubers out there, a lot of people out there claiming, you know, they're getting like 40% returns a week, which is totally unrealistic, especially if you're looking at dividend investing, because to be completely honest, if you're getting like a three, 4% dividend um, return a year, that's probably pretty good for the most part. There's not a lot of reliable stocks out there that are giving yields higher than five to 6%. 
If they are, there's a good chance as soon as that you know recession or stock market crash comes, or even if the stock market dips a little bit, that they're going to pretty much immediately cut their dividends. And you could simply look that up by checking their past dividend returns. And that's moving on to the next point on how to build a pretty massive dividend portfolio is look at companies' dividend yields, what they're giving out right now, but also look at they've consistently given these dividends in the past. Now, one list of stocks you might want to look at is the dividend aristocrats, which you could just find those stocks with a simple Google search, but these are a list of stocks that have been increasing their dividend yields consistently annually for I believe it's 25 years and a lot of them have been doing it for longer than this. So one thing to definitely look at with stocks that you're trying to choose for dividend stocks is have they been increasing their dividend yield? And if not, you know, have they remained stagnant or have they decreased it recently or even, you know, in the past 10 years or so? Um, one kind of like moment in time where I look at a lot of dividend stocks to see if they're actually reliable or not is in the 07, 08 range. Um, basically any companies that decrease their dividend yield from anywhere from 2007 to like the 2009 range probably decreased it or cut their dividend because of the recession that happened somewhat recently about 10 years ago. So there are some companies that didn't cut their dividends and I would say that those companies probably have a lot more reliable of a dividend and probably aren't going to cut them if something else happens again. Now is that you know, guaranteed that they won't cut them? Probably not. Is it guaranteed that they're going to increase Increase them probably not but it's probably giving you a pretty good indication that they're not going to cut them because there are a lot of big blue chip dividend stocks that did cut their dividend yields even up to 50 percent during that recession so obviously that would take a pretty big hit on your portfolio considering not only are you losing you know price valuation of your stocks by them decreasing in price but you're also losing that dividend yield if they were to cut that too so that could be very very crucial to your dividend portfolio especially if you're probably investing in a dividend portfolio you're probably doing it for the long term not necessarily the short term and the last thing you might want to take into consideration when creating a dividend portfolio or if you're trying to build your dividend portfolio is looking into some monthly dividend stocks now monthly dividend stocks are great because compared to normal dividend stocks most dividend stocks probably like i think it's like 80 percent of them give out dividends four times a year and there are some out there that give them like twice a year or once a year but that's honestly pretty rare most stocks give them out four times a year but there is a small percentage of stocks that give them out every single month now i do own a couple in my portfolio and i've posted videos about monthly dividend stocks in the past so definitely head around to my channel and check that out if you're interested in finding the specific stocks but monthly dividend stocks are nice because especially if you're reinvesting that um, dividend it's really really starts to add up and once you get the compounding interest into that it really starts to add up a lot quicker than a normal dividend stock um, even if the yield might be slightly lower but a lot of these monthly dividend stocks typically have pretty good yields anywhere above three percent and um, another thing to watch out for monthly dividend stocks and just dividend stocks in general is that if it has an extremely high dividend yield and you know that could be anywhere I consider it pretty high if it's above six or seven percent and even you know somewhere up to the 20 percent range if a stock has that high dividend yield it is most likely not sustainable at all and there's a very very good chance they're probably going to cut it within the next couple of months or even you know the next couple of years and they almost most definitely will cut that dividend if the stock market was to go down significantly whether it be a crash recession or even just a little bit of a dip and why they're going to do that because it is most likely that no I mean, there's literally, I can only think of a handful of companies out there, and these are the biggest and the best companies that even have the room in their budget to have a dividend yield that high. If a company is having a dividend yield that high, they most likely are losing money on it. They're not making any money on it, which isn't you know, necessarily a horrible thing. A lot of companies do that, but at the same time, that is nowhere near sustainable. I mean, even if you look at companies that have like huge amount of amounts of room to do this like google apple um facebook microsoft you know companies that you know may or may not have a dividend but definitely have the room to have one at a very high rate um, even companies like this don't have them that high so that is one thing to look at as well is it too dangerously high you know obviously you don't want one below one percent or something like that unless you're expecting future growth of the dividend but you don't want one crazy high because it's probably not sustainable but anyways guys that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed the video if you did leave a like and comment below what are some dividend stocks you might be looking at or that you like but other than that guys like i said before if you haven't checked out my channel before i'm talking about investing in the stock market so if you're interested in that definitely head over and check it out but other than that guys thanks for watching